what's up everybody welcome back to exotic gas Logi again and today we will discuss on a beautiful topic making the right choice this is the only choice that you need to make every moment every second every day every hour every muhurata every year <laughs> Welcome back to Exotic Astrology again and if you are new to the channel then subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with your family friends and the loved ones. Also if you like my videos then see the other ones on astrology and share it with other people. And before beginning as I say God is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there. Now, this video is on making the right choice. What kind of a choice am I talking? Well, let me go back to Mahabharat. Mahabharat is one of the ancient Indian epics, which is phenomenal for knowledge, for guidance, for illuminating ourselves when we are in darkness, for enlightening ourselves when we are lost. It is like a compass like the Ramayana and the Srimad Bhagavatam and so many other Vedas, the Upanishads, the Puranas. It, it is a very phenomenal book and it is actually a poem. It is the world's longest poem actually. Now, in the Mahabharata, there is the famous wall of Kurukshetra about which everyone knows, right? In that, Lord Krishna was there on the side of Arjuna and the army of Lord Krishna, which was the army known as Narayani Sena, which is the army of the Yadus, because Lord Krishna was from the Yadu Vansh. Yadu was a great king after whom the dynasty is named. Just like Lord Ram is born in Raghu Vansh, Raghu was a great king after whom the dynasty of Surya Vamsha, the descendants of Sun God, is named as. And in case of Krishna, it is named after Yadu, the great Yadu. Now, before the war starts, there was a time when, actually see what happened is, Krishna was the relative of <coughs> both Arjuna and Duryodhana. Arjuna was one of the five Pandavas and Duryodhana was the head of the Kurus. And the Kurus had conspired, had cheated the Pandavas and then the whole war took place. All the peace negotiations from the side of the Pandavas failed. Duryodhana said, I will not give them any land. I will not give them anything, in fact. And then the war was inevitable. And then it was understood that every person who was present in India that time, which was probably known as Aryavrat at that time, they had to form alliances on either side of them which means that either you could stay on the side of the Pandavas or on the side of the Kauravas but probably you could not stay <laughs> out of the war it was like you have to be either this side or that side you can't be out of it there were some kings who did not take part but the number was very less <coughs> so when the war was about to begin then there was one side who was, it was very instrumental, whose side they are going to fight because that party with whom this army is there is going to win the war. And which was that army? It was the army of the Yadus who was headed by Lord Krishna and Balaram himself because his army was known as Narayani Sena because Narayan himself God, Vishnu, was there on their side. So, Narayani Sena was extremely powerful. It was a mind-blowing army. They had one Akshohini division. Akshohini is like an army group or a cantonment. And it was a huge, massive, powerful army. It was known as Chaturangini Sena. Chaturangini means the army which has four levels. First is the foot soldiers. Then second is the the soldiers who are riding in horses, the cavalry, as you say, from the game Age of Empires, I have learned cavalry. <laughs> and then there were chariots. They were known as Rathi, Atirathi, Maharathi, Ardharathi, 
Ati Maharathi and all those these different connotations are there for the different warriors who used to fight in chariots and then the last was the elephants that means there were four levels the foot soldiers the horse soldiers the chariot soldiers and the elephant soldiers and depending on their level they used to <coughs> fight accordingly for example in Kurukshetra there was a great warrior from the side of the Kauravas his name was Bhagadatta he was the ruler of Prajyotishpur who are, which is current day Assam in India where the Kamakya Devi's temple is there and that is how the army was arranged and this Narayani Sena this Chaturangini Sena was extremely powerful in fact it is said that every warrior of the Narayani Sena was as powerful as Lord Krishna himself in warfare and every foot soldier was as powerful as one one Maharathi in the battle nobody could stand this army it was understood that whichever side this army is that side is unanimously going to be victorious there was no second opinion on this and then Shakuni was the uncle the brother of Gandhari who was Duryodhana's mother then Shakuni told Duryodhana that my dear sir <laughs> Shakuni always used to scheme and hatch the evil uh, plans and then Shakuni said my dear Duryodhana if at all you desire victory then please understand that you need this army on your side otherwise you will not be able to gain victory because Narayani Sena will be the deciding factor of who is going to be victorious and who is going to lose the battle and that is why he instructed Duryodhana that at once go to Dwarka where Krishna is and request the army from him and including him because it can't happen that <coughs> Krishna fights on one side and his army fights on another side that cannot happen then Shakuni told him that you need this army at any cost okay do not jeopardize with this <coughs> then Duryodhana went to Krishna and then instinctively on the other side Yudhishthira Maharaj also told Arjuna that for our victory it is very essential that Lord Krishna and the Narayani Sena is there on our side because wherever Krishna is there is victory there is joy there is unlimited happiness and also the army is also extremely powerful so you need to go to Krishna and you need to ask about the army and ask about him so please move as soon as possible and then as soon as Yudhishthira instructed Arjuna Arjuna at once departed for Dwaraka and then after departing he reached Dwaraka and then Duryodhana also reached so what happened was Duryodhana reached a bit before Krishna, uh, Arjuna reached and Krishna was sleeping there in his bed and Duryodhana as soon as he reached out of his arrogance and out of his entitlement towards things Duryodhana's biggest problem was he always used to have this entitlement complex entitlement complex means he always used to think that I deserve this I should get this because he was in this illusion that he is born to rule he is born to be the king uh, that was his illusion which was never to come true fortunately <laughs> and then Duryodhana thought that okay I am a king now I am son of Dhritarashtra I am the king I will go and sit directly in front of Krishna's face so Lord Krishna was sleeping in the bed in Dwaraka and Duryodhana directly went and he sat in front of Lord Krishna's face out of his arrogance and then Arjuna reached just some moments later and then Arjuna saw that Lord Krishna is sleeping so he didn't want to disturb him and Arjuna out of his humility and his gracious nature out of his benevolence he 
sat down in the feet of Lord Krishna and he saw Lord Krishna and his beautiful face and after remembering the days which he had spent with his best friend, Krishna was his best friend, Krishna and Arjuna were best friends, he could not control himself. His emotions broke out and he started crying and his tears started falling. He was so much attached to Krishna himself. And then the tears which came out from his eyes, they fell in Krishna's lotus feet. And as soon as they fell, Lord Krishna opened his eyes and he got up from his sleep, <laughs> apparent sleep. God also sleeps sometimes. You know, he also needs rest sometimes. And then what happens? Duryodhana is jubilant. Yes, finally Krishna is up. But then what happens? Krishna opens his eyes like this and it's very obvious that when somebody is standing in your feet, it is the he is the first person you will see. So, Krishna first saw that Arjuna is there and then he welcomed Arjuna. He said, my dear Arjuna, welcome. Very happy to see you. And then Duryodhana was furious. He said, no, I came first. I am sitting here earlier. <laughs> And then Krishna looked on his side and said, Oh, okay, Duryodhana, you are also there. Good. Welcome to Dwaraka, both of you. And then Duryodhana said that, Well, you know, the war is inevitable now. And Dwaraka is such a powerful country, that country or state, whatever you call it, kingdom, that it cannot stay without contributing itself to either of the sides. So, I have come here to ask support from you. It is your duty because you are also our relative that you uh, help us. And then Krishna said, but I am the relative of both of you. <laughs> so there's a problem here. <laughs> I cannot fight from both the sides and I cannot deny both of you. Therefore, I will give both of you a choice. What was the choice? Everybody knows about it. Lord Krishna said, I personally will be there on one side, but I will not pick any weapon. I will be Nishastra. I will be Nihatha, means no weapon in hand. And I will not fight. I will not raise a weapon. That is my vow. I will not pick a weapon at any cost that is my vow and on the other side you will have this Narayani Sena this invincible army of one Akshohini who is deadlier than the army of the demigods also even Dev Sena Indra's entire army could not fight against this Narayani Sena it was invincible it was army of Krishna himself so then Krishna said to Duryodhana so my dear Duryodhana and my dear Arjuna now it is time for you to decide which do you want. Do you want me or do you want my army? Narayani Sena. And then Arjuna started smiling the moment he heard that you know, this kind of a uh, contradiction has come about. But Duryodhana became very suspicious. You know? He was thinking, what should I do? Krishna is all powerful. He's all, he's like God. He Maybe he is God. <laughs> but then this army is also there. Na. Oh, it's a very difficult thing. But this Duryodhana was such a fool. He thought that, anyways, what will I do by taking Krishna? This is not much use. Because he's anyways not going to fight. He may be powerful, but he's not going to fight, you know. So ultimately, the if the person is not fighting, what is the use of him being on our side, right? So better let me ask this army only. No? Informidable. This army was matchless. No army could match the Narayani Sena. And then Krishna told, so Arjuna, you will ask first. And then Duryodhana was horrified. He said, oh my God, what if he asks this army? What will I have? I will have only this Krishna who has nothing to do. He will not pick up a weapon. What will he do? It's a waste of time. I will, I will simply lose this battle if Krishna is there on my side. So, he protested. He said, no, 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 no. I came first here. So, 
I have the right to ask first. And then Krishna said, no, you came first, but I have seen Arjuna first. That is one reason. And the other reason is, in scriptures it is said that whenever it comes to giving or taking responsibility, it is the elder person who should be entitled for that. Respect, responsibility, all this is for the elders. And whenever it comes to giving some helping hand, it should be the younger person. And Duryodhana was elder to Arjuna and Bhima was younger to him. Uh, sorry, Arjuna was younger to him. Arjuna, uh, Duryodhana and Bhima were almost equal. Yudhishthir was elder to him and Arjuna was younger than him. And of course, Nakul said he was also younger. Therefore, Krishna said, Arjuna, you ask first. And then Duryodhana again protested. He said, oh, it is not my mistake that uh, uh, you saw Arjuna first. Na. You should have turned this side. Na. <laughs> and then Krishna said, but what to do? Arjuna was standing at such a place that the moment I opened my eyes, my eyes went to him. Then Duryodhana said, but the problem is all the seats in this room are kept behind. And then Krishna said that, well, <laughs> seats are only aspired by those who have the entitlement complex. <laughs> Why do you want to sit? Why do we want to sit in the seat? Basically, that's what Krishna said. If you think that you are entitled to things, then well, go and search seats where to sit. Is it here or is it there or is it in front of me or is it in back of me? Arjuna did not come and sit in the seat. He could have also sat there. But Arjuna started crying when he saw Krishna and he was standing and he started sitting there itself. He did not go and sit in the seat. <laughs> there are so many other seats behind me, but what to do? He he does not have this entitlement complex that I am the king, I should sit in a seat. <laughs> And then Krishna says to Arjuna, Arjuna, you ask. And then Arjuna starts smiling. And Duryodhana is horrified. Duryodhana was like, my God, today I have lost it. The war of Kurukshetra is finished. Better I don't start it maybe. <laughs> and then what happens is, Arjuna tells that, what is the need of anybody else when you are there? And then Arjuna says, I only want you. I don't want your resources. And as soon as Duryodhana hears this, he is jubilant. His joy knew no bounds. And he could not control his ecstasy because of which he uh, ended up saying that. He made a very uh, sorry face like a pumpkin. He said, yeah, Arjuna has asked you so what to do? The army is only remaining for me. Okay, I will be satisfied with the army. And internally he was thinking, oh, this, this Arjuna is such a big fool that he uh, asked the person who is not even going to fight. He is not even going to raise a weapon. Uh, what a fool this Arjuna is. And what a blunder he has done. Now he has sealed his fate by doing this, by asking a person who is not even going to fight. And my victory has been assured. And then Duryodhana immediately departs from there. And he goes to Shakuni and says, My dear mama, my dear uncle, I have made it. The army of the Yadus is there on my side. And then Shakuni was a bit suspicious because Shakuni always knew that Duryodhana will do some blunder or the other somewhere. Because he was a, he was a mudha, he was a dumb fellow who will always do some mistake or the other. <laughs> That is why Shakuni started asking, can you describe what happened? Then Duryodhana said, oh yeah, nothing happened. I went there and uh, this Arjuna, this fool, he said, okay, I will take you. And as soon as Shakuni heard this, that Krishna is there on their side and we only have the army. Then Shakuni told to Duryodhana that, my dear Duryodhana, I had heard that not all donkeys have horns. <laughs> and 
then duryodhana when he heard this he was furious he said how dare you call me a donkey how dare you don't you dare call me like that and shakuni said yes i will call you a million times because that's what you are you bloody fool what a decision you had taken you are jubilant you are laughing you are dancing your death is certain now the moment krishna went on their side your defeat has been certified nobody in this world can defeat the side on which krishna is there even if he is weaponless even if he is not fighting even if he is not doing things which a warrior should do but his presence itself is the indication of victory and duryodhana you will regret this you will lament and you will so much curse yourself that you let this happen your death is certain now nobody can stop it and that's what happened ultimately that krishna was on their side on the side of the pandavas and the pandavas were victorious so what is the lesson that you get from here is which is more important god or his resources <laughs> god is the person and his resources represent all the things money wealth all the materialistic assets in this world women money fame name luxury royalty comforts reputation job all the things are god's resources so the point here i am trying to make from last 20 minutes is you have to decide what do you want do you want god or do you want his resources if you want his resources then you will lose ultimately but if you want god then you will be victorious therefore arjuna had the had to make the choice only once in his life but we always time and again every moment in fact we have this choice to make do we want god or do we want his resources therefore whenever we have the chance of taking god rather than taking his resources then we should understand that we are fortunate we have we should understand we have made the right choice by taking god this does not mean that you do not have god's resources because wherever god is there his resources will automatically be there which means if you get opportunities in this world for example there is a spiritual gathering which is happening as in india you call it satsang and in other parts of the world also suppose you get a uh, invitation from somewhere suppose a spiritual personality calls you he calls you and says we are going to have a discussion on the gita on the bhagavatam or on the ramayana or on the mahabharat or even if you are a person from a different religion who is watching this as you have discussions in the mosque in the masjid for the muslims and you have the daily uh, weekly sunday meets in the churches and suppose that time a friend calls you and says hey we are planning to go on a trip <laughs> suppose you are in europe and they say we are planning to go to paris paris <laughs> and then somebody says oh we are planning to go to berlin berlin <laughs> and then you also get a phone where maybe your guru says that yes there is this program i want that you go and attend there and it's near your home near your house and then you are caught up in the dilemma what should i do should i attend this or should i attend that this that this that this that this is the choice that you have to make here comes your discretion here comes your ability to make the right choice therefore always choose where god is not where his resources are because wherever god is there is victory that is the conclusion of the last verse of the bhagavad gita and we see ultimately wherever krishna and arjuna is there there is victory and they were victorious on that side but if we run after god's resources then 
probably we will not make it <laughs> we will get everything else but god and then ultimately we will realize that we have lost the wall of kurukshetra because kurukshetra is like life and life is like kurukshetra every day is a battle there are great warriors that you have to fight against and if you want to win the war of kurukshetra means the battle of this life krishna has to be there on your side if he's not there forget it it is not going to happen you may have warriors like bhishma drona karna duryodhan dushasan they will all collapse it is just a matter of time and even if your army is very small like seven akshohinis compared to 11 akshohinis for the kauravas then at the end even then pandavas were victorious they triumphed over all the challenges and such warriors like bhishma drona karna duryodhan dushasan nobody could hinder their victory because krishna was there on their side so the moment you make the right choice of choosing krishna over his mundane resources that is the day you will obtain victory in this life and you will have joy fulfillment com- contentment and peace and everlasting ecstasy all right that is it from my side if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with everybody else and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it until next time i hope you make the right choice goodbye see you